Hi everybody, Jonathan Scott here of The Big Cat People, Angie behind the camera. And today we're going to give you insights into our top tips on photographing cheetahs because we have decided that from the 4th of December, which is World Cheetah Day, through to the end of the month, 31st of December, we're going to give a 20% discount on all of our cheetah prints in our fine art gallery. So check those out, both limited and open edition prints. And 10% of the sales will go to the Cheetah Conservation Fund, of which we're proud to be patrons. Now, top tips for photographing cheetahs. I mean, you are talking here, the fastest animal on land can run up to 60, some people say up to 70 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. And I can promise you, when you are sitting next to a cheetah, not in the car, unless it's Kike up on the roof, just taking a pee or crapping on me, but literally on a mound, just out there. You can see her out through the open side of your vehicle because of course our vehicle is customized for photography. And when that cheetah decides to take off after prey, you can hear the thump of its feet and the acceleration in just literally a few seconds, she or he will be going at 45 miles an hour. Just incredible. You hear the thump of those cleats, those running spikes, those specially adapted pads, which can allow them to move so fast after their prey. So how are you gonna capture the essence of a cheetah? Well, let's first of all start with, you know, the speed issue. Because everybody who comes on safari to the wonderful Masai Mara, where we're based at Governor's Camp, here at home in Kenya, everybody wants to capture that sense of action when a cheetah is hunting. And of course, because they are primarily daytime hunters, they are probably the easiest of the big cats to work with in trying to get action, in trying to get a hunt. But the big thing is just do everything possible not to disturb the hunt. And that's, that'll come into the tips we're gonna give you about how to go about this. So first of all, you're set up. You've got the cheetah in view. You can see that she wants to hunt. Maybe she's got cubs with her, maybe she hasn't. If she's got cubs, all the more reason to be careful. And the first thing is you've got a plan to be in the right position as to where the hunt is gonna end up. Because the key shot is always gonna be as the cheetah closes with that incredible burst of speed and then reaches out with its paw to trip the prey. And Angie has got some wonderful photographs of cheetahs, honey's boys, those three male cheetahs, sons of honey, who, you know, would hunt wildebeest. And there's one particular shot I've got in mind that she took during Big Cat Diary filming, because she's our stills photographer. And uh, here the cheetah and the wildebeest, a calf, all four feet off the ground, the cheetah behind, obviously, the wildebeest, and just going flat out. The cheetah running for its food, the wildebeest running for its life. And you've suddenly got that moment that we all hope for, which is when the cheetah and the wildebeest, or the gazelle, are both in the same frame and are either coming barreling towards you down the, the lens or are running sideways. If they're running sideways, even better, because then you don't have a depth of focus problem. So, uh, you know, it's, this, this is a testing thing. So first of all, what are you going to set your camera settings to? Well, if you want to capture the action and have the cheetah and its prey absolutely pin sharp, you're talking one thousandth to two thousandth of a second. And of course, in the old days, that would mean that you could be struggling to get enough light to shoot with that faster shutter speed. But today, with cameras that you can just bump up your ISO setting to make this, the camera's uh, digital processor more sensitive to light, you can capture these action motions or these action pictures by taking fast speeds and still get some depth of field. So, you know, it's, it's a win-win situation. That's number one, what your camera setting's gonna be. But now that's gonna give you a pin sharp picture. What if you want to create like Angie did with a wonderful picture of Kike, the cheetah that famously crapped through the roof hatch onto me, and peed too, for good measure. Uh, a picture that Angie took is in uh, our Big Cat, Stars of Big Cat diary book, and I'm sure you're gonna see it right now when uh, our son and daughter-in-law get the images into place here for you. Uh, you'll see this beautiful picture that Angie took of Kike 
flying across the plains after Thompson's Gazelle. Yes, she got it. And again, one of those situations where you have the opportunity where the animal, the cheetah, is running sideways at 90 degrees to your camera. And so depth of focus in terms of getting your, um, your focus right, you know, locking onto the cheetah and then, uh, you know, capturing the picture. Now, Angie took that shot at one two fiftieth of a second, not a thousandth of a second, not two thousandth of a second, she slowed the shutter speed down and she held her camera and she looked through the viewfinder and she panned, which means that she swung the lens to follow the cheetah in her viewfinder and put it on fast frame shutter release. So, you know, probably 10, 15, 10, 12, 14 frames a second. You want every image, you want every go at it that you can get. So you're on high speed drive. You're going to take as many pictures as possible. You keep your finger down. Sounds like a machine gun going off, although modern cameras now, there's a much more silent mode and you follow the action and you lock on with your autofocus onto your subject. And in this shot, it's just Kike. The, the prey was way ahead, uh, but Angie just got this one of all four feet off the ground and a blur of motion of the legs because the head and body are virtually motionless, certainly the head, as the cheetah runs after its prey, but the legs are going just like, you know, a bat out of hell. And so by that 250th of a second, she slowed it down and captured the sense of motion. Now you can try going even slower than that. So you can go down to a 60th of a second or even a 15th of a second and get again some elements of sharpness, the head perhaps of the cheetah, and then everything else nice and blurry, including the background. So that's, but you know, you want to be having had a few chances at fast shutter speeds, um, you know, when you first try to, taking action pictures of cheetahs because, you know, going with slow speeds, that's tricky. You know, one out of 10, Angie goes mad. When she sees what I've been attempting at times in my camera and she sees how few shots I get that work in that slow shutter mode, she wants to kill me for all the great sharp shots I could have had. But then occasionally I nail it and I can say, there's the shot. One out of 10, maybe one out of 100, who knows? So we've dealt with the speed thing. Now, what about light? Well, obviously, if you can go backlit or sidelit, not front lit. You don't want the sun straight over your shoulder. If the sun is behind you, get at least a few degrees off the direct light. So as you build a little bit, you model your subject. There's some sunlight or rather there's some highlights and some shadows. You can feel the depth and character of your, your cheetah. But preferably be out there first thing in the morning before the sun comes up, out as late as you can be, and then hoping you can find your cheetah and you can have it backlit with that halo of light around that furry spotted coat and the whiskers. You know, just imagine Angie backlit. God, I tell you, she looks beautiful. And a cheetah, just amazing. And Angie's great at backlit and sidelit. And of course, silhouetted in the morning. There's a beautiful shot Angie's taken. It's in the Fine Art Gallery. And it's of Honey, so little Toto's mum. And Honey was uh, sitting up on a termite mound as the sun came up. And the key there is, because you're backlit, block the sun with your subject, as Angie did, so as it just becomes this Finx-like black silhouette up against the horizon, head turned sideways, because you need to see the shape. It's very important. You don't want, if it's heads directly away from you, you can sort of make out it's a cat, but get the face sideways on if you can. The, the cheetah's gonna have to look around the whole time for danger. Turns to the right, turns to the left, click, there's your shot. Block the sun out, otherwise, of course, it just blows, um, you know, all of the sky and everything, Just it, it just becomes a mess. So block the sun, or just have a little bit of edge of it just coming through your picture. So that's a question of light. So we've done light, we've done exposure, um, and then there's a shot that uh, we took of Kike, on a termite mound with a storm sky behind. So think about composition. This was an opportunity to put Kike, well, she was on a termite mound, offset her to one side to make the framing dynamic, put her and the horizon in the lower part of your frame, rule of thirds, so she's in the bottom left-hand part of the frame, as, and you've got the horizon just running along the bottom third of the picture, and then two-thirds of the picture is this extraordinary blue, inky blue storm sky. 
And I've said it before, we took lots of pictures of this situation with Kiko on the mound because there was only one, and for a fraction of a second, where you just knew, got it. Her tail curled out, her head turned to mirror the shape of her tail in the other direction. You could see her in profile, and instead of a cheetah with looking like four legs and no tail, tail, head, silhouette, and then, just, we've got the composition now right, but she was on a termite mound and initially the horizon was running through the termite mound. So we reached over the edge of the car with a waist level viewfinder, a viewfinder you could look down because you couldn't put the camera on the ground at that point, but you could lean out over the car, look down through this little periscope, which you attach over the back, the eye cup of your camera. And now you could see, you could rotate the focus ring on the top of the periscope and you could drop the camera level so as now the cheetah, Kike on the mound, came up and instead of the horizon cutting through her body, you had the shot. So composition, that's number three. And I can see this is going on a long time, so I'm going to be fairly quick now. So composition, speed. What about in terms of telling the story? We've talked about in that shot, we had Kike in the landscape. You don't want just photographs, portraits, but if you are going to take portraits, make them count. And of course, Angie's portrait of little Toto, 2005, honey's cub, little male cub, stole the heart of the whole of the world virtually. People still talk about him. But here's this beautiful picture of this tiny cub just encircled or semicircled by the curl of Kike's tail. Or not Kike's tail, Honey's tail. And so wonderful portrait. And then there's another portrait that Angie took, a very intimate portrait. So this is now using a big lens so this is what lenses am I going to use? Wide angle, capture the big landscape. So Kike on that termite mount, that was a 70 to 200 mil, a mid-range telephoto, a zoom, so you could quickly compose. But there is another shot, and this is the final one. And I think I've given you five tips here, probably a lot more. But this is an intimate picture with beautiful light, Angie with a 600 mil lens, Cheetah, which was honey with little Toto on a termite mount, early morning, little cub coming up to greet mum. And you can see, I love it, there's this little twist in one of uh, honey's whiskers. But the intimacy, you could feel the moment there. The sort of love, the bond between mother and cub. So there you go, cheetahs. And remember, from the 4th of December, which is World Cheetah Day, and then World Cheetah Month, which is a special offer, 20% off any of our fine art cheetah prints, limited or um, open edition, from the 4th of December through to the end of the month. Just snap it up, get one of those cheetah pictures, put it on your wall, you won't regret it. Best Christmas gift you could ever give yourself. And in doing so, you will be helping to raise funds, because 10% of the profits of sales will go to the Cheetah Conservation Fund, of which we are proud ambassadors and who do an incredible job in trying to ensure a future for those last remaining 7,000 cheetahs only in the world. Take care. Happy Christmas. Bye from us.